You know those moments in sim racing where you're convinced everyone else is some kind of cheat code? What were those things? Were those the other cars? Well, I may have found one. It's called IRFFB. It has been around for a few years now, and when talking to people on the sim, it seems most of you still haven't heard of it. No, sadly, it's not magically going to make you any faster. If it did, trust me, I'd be an esports world champion by now. It does, however, transform how iRacing feels through the wheel, and honestly, it's the closest thing that I've found to feeling like a grip hack. Now, you should know I am able to drive the same lap times with iRacing's default force feedback settings, but I do have far more self spins when doing so. And I'll explain why later. In this video, I'll cover exactly what IRFFB is, what it does, how it installs without breaking your computer, how you can set it up so it doesn't feel like a washing machine on a spin cycle, and finally, I'll show you the settings that I actually use for different cars in iRacing so you can use them as a baseline to adjust from, as well as let you know the important things on how to use it that'll make your life much easier, and they are important things. It may be worth noting I'm not affiliated with IRFFB in any kind, and they don't know I'm making this video. Okay, so IRFFB 2022 actually started around five years ago as simple IRFFB, but it's been kept updated and simplified by Tom Hogue since 2022. It has new arrivals such as Myra, Marvin's awesome iRacing app, but it's much simpler to use. I personally was never able to dial Marvin's app in to feel as good as IRFFB, so I went back to this trusty little tool. At its core, it's a free third-party app that hooks into iRacing's telemetry and then feeds that into your wheel as force feedback. That sounds boring, but here's why it matters. iRacing only sends force feedback to your wheel at 60 hertz, which is fine if you like a force feedback that feels like a flipbook animation. iRFFB takes that signal and smooths it, interpolates it, and can output at 360 hertz. Translation, way less steppy and much more detail in your hands. It also adds extra cues that iRacing doesn't give you by default. Think understeer and oversteer warnings, a bit of road texture, what's often called seat of pants feel, which I'll be honest is a weird name because the last thing I want to feel through my pants whilst racing is a wheelbase, but basically means you get early warning when the car is about to slide. It won't always save you from sending it into the barriers, but it might reduce how frequently you do so. It certainly does with me. There are two main ways to use IRFFB, the direct low latency mode, which layers extra detail on top of iRacing's normal feedback with minimal delay, and then there's the telemetry driven mode which completely replaces iRacing's force feedback. Now the latter feels richer but adds a tiny bit of latency, two or three milliseconds. Personally I recommend testing both though I use the latter which is named IRFFB 360 or 720 smoothing on the app. It really is difficult to explain and describe how it feels, but it's a case of the force feedback gradually gets stronger as you approach the limit of adhesion. When you're cornering, you get a muscle memory for where that limit is before the wheels give up the ghost and decide to make you face the way you were coming. The more you use it, the more you'll get better at being able to drive at the absolute limit lap after lap as it gets harder and harder before it starts getting loose. As it's free and takes two minutes to set up and even less to delete, I strongly suggest that you download it and try it out. If you love it, then great. If you don't like the way it feels, then you've lost nothing more than maybe 30 minutes of your time and possibly all the respect and love you had for me and my channel. But here's how to install it. How to install it? Right, the scary bit, installing IRFFB. Now don't panic, it's not actually as bad as it looks. So here's the play-by-play. -play. So download IRFFB 2022 from the official GitHub page. If you don't know where that is, I will link it in my description. If you do grab it from a random forum post or Reddit post, enjoy your new collection of Russian malware. I cannot believe this shit. Once you've waited the seven or eight seconds it takes to download, unzip the folder, but do it somewhere sensible, not on your desktop, not in your downloads folder, somewhere you'll probably remember it. Personally, I created a folder in documents, called it IRFFB, and that's where I placed it. Then you run the install it. Once installed, fire up IRFFB before you start an iRacing session. Think of it like putting on socks before shoes. Technically, you can do it the other way around, but you'll regret it immediately and people will probably look at you strange. I personally pin it to my taskbar so I can always just start it with one click. I've even added it to my stream deck, which you can't see, along with all my other must-have iRacing apps. How to set it up. Okay, now that you've installed it, let's talk about setup. Now, this is where most people might get overwhelmed, but don't worry, I'll keep it simple because if I can figure it out, anyone can. 
First, pick your mode. Low latency, direct if you want iRacing's native force feedback with maybe some extra seasoning, or telemetry mode if you want the full smorgasbord buffet of effects. Or use the new Auto 360 setting in RFFB, which switches between the two depending on speed. It's like having your cake and eating it, except in this case, cake is force feedback and you're definitely eating it whilst wearing gloves. I'm not sure of the metaphor there. Next, check out the oversteer and understeer sliders. These replace the old seat of pants setting if you had the original RFFB. They basically let you exaggerate what the car's doing at the front or the rear. Dial them in until you can actually tell when the car's about to let go. And when I say dial it in, I personally just go for the full effect of 100% oversteer and I turn understeer off completely. I like to feel the bumps on iRacing when I'm not at Sebring anyway, but I don't want to end up with carpal tunnel syndrome, so I set the bumps intensity to between 10 and 20. In the app, always set the minimum force to zero, then the max force works in opposition to how you may at first think. The max force is the amount of in-game force feedback that would equal the maximum torque of your wheelbase. So if we take the MX-5 as an example, I've got the max force set to 37. That means that in-game, if the MX-5 reached a torque of 37 newton meters or above, that would use the entirety of my 12 newton meters available to my Moza R12 base. Conversely, using these settings, if the game gave a torque signal of maybe just one third of that, say 13 newton meters, then my wheelbase would produce around four newton meters of force, i.e. one third of the maximum it can. So, in simple terms, as you move the slider to the left, i.e. you lower the number, the more force you will feel through your wheelbase, and the more to the right, then the lower the overall force. Play about with the sliders to see what suits each car for yourself. I've got a 12 newton meter base, as I say. If you've got a 6 newton meter wheelbase, then you may wish to have your sliders well to the left of mine. Or if you're running a 21 newton meter beast, then you might want to have them well to the right. Unless you're that guy that likes to go on eye racing with no top on with full force feedback, but he's a bit weird anyway. All right, let's get practical. Here are the settings that I personally use for some of the more popular series. Now the disclaimer, these work for me, but your mileage may vary depending on your wheelbase, your rig, and how willing you are to believe that the tiny slider adjustments are actually making you faster. The 2022 version lets you save by car and track, which is brilliant because obviously the F3 at Okayama feels nothing like the GT3 at Spa, and you'll never remember what sliders you use otherwise. Little note on this, in the warnings at the end, I do tell you to take pictures of them anyway. So my settings for the popular cars are as follows. These are mine on screen, so feel free to pause here or come back to the video if you need to be, and I'll play some music whilst I just quickly run through them. So not to put you off, but I do want to run through a couple of warnings about the app. It is free, and as such, it does have some of its own idiosyncrasies. Firstly is that you'll need to close it after each session and reopen it. Secondly, sometimes it doesn't want to reopen, so to combat that, I have Task Manager also pinned to my taskbar as well. When IRFFB does refuse to open, I open taskbar, find IRFFB 2022 brackets 32-bit in the background processes, and force it to end task. Once you've done that, it will open straight away. By force of habit, every time I load into a new session, I close then reopen RFFB to ensure it's working. Secondly, keep track of your settings for each car. I do take photos of them, because um, whilst they do save, it saves the car and track combo specifically. So when you load a car into a session at a track you haven't driven before, sometimes it defaults to the generic settings. The third, and it's not really a warning, but I personally don't mess with the damping auto switch, understeer, or effect timing. They may be great, but I spent three years using it with the basic but incredibly impressive oversteer effect. Same with the new 720 smoothing rather than the 360 that I've been using. The 720 may be better, but I've not wanted to change anything as I've loved the way that it feels. So if you do try the 720 and it's better, do let me know in the comments and maybe I'll grow up. So that's our FFB 2022 part cheat code, part placebo, but either way, it can make iRacing feel completely different. If you're on a lower end wheel, this is basically mandatory. On a higher end direct drive, it's more of a preference call. Either way, give it a try, experiment with the settings, let me know if you end up faster or more consistent or just more confused.
So that's it. If you found this video useful, give us a thumbs up, maybe subscribe if you haven't, or maybe share it with that one friend who's always blaming iRacing's false feedback for their own crashing. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on track, or maybe even in the gravel track testing another slider. I've been Sambo iRacing. Thanks.